then resonant machines are used for balancing industry, most rotors, and parts of normal precision. These are electric motors, fans, pumps, agricultural machines. The advantage of the application is narrow supports and the ability to install a rotor of various designs. It is possible to balance the rotor with a large initial imbalance at a low speed. The design of the machine software allows for safe balancing of the rotors in their own bearings. Additional equipment of the machine with balancing mandrels or devices, expanding the technological capabilities of the machine. The machines can be used for their production with a large range of repair services of enterprises, as well as for serial and small-scale production. Numerous adjustments allow you to adapt the machine during the changeover to absolutely any part, regardless of its design. The machine has software and technical tools that simplify the process of correcting the imbalance. Optionally, the package may include an imbalance correction module. It eliminates the unweighted mass without removing parts from the machine. It should also be remembered that the accuracy of balancing depends on the quality of the part itself. Universal pre-resonant balancing machines of VTM Group are produced for rotors weighing from 10 to 30 kilograms, up to 100 kilograms, up to 500 kilograms and in some cases up to 5 to 6 tons. The complete set of this machine includes a PAC-1 measuring console, a headstock with an axial drive, a cardan, an axial stop, a second measuring support, a temporary drive, the first measuring support, as well as an axial stop. All this is on the frame. The bed can be of any length. The rotor is placed on the machine in a shock-free way, that is, a device is desirable on the crane bank that will not allow rapid movement of the crane drive for smooth installation of the rotor. The machine can also be equipped with stackers for shock-free installation. The rotor is mounted on roller supports with its necks. The necks must be pre-treated, they should not have burrs, face, cracks and so on no mechanical damage. After installing the rotor on the machine, we bring the axial stops using the handle. The axial stop is one of our working ones, the second is a safety stop. The axial stop is brought preferably through the ball, so that there is a point contact. After that, if necessary, we set the rotor on a horizontal plane using the construction level. So, in order to install the rotor horizontally, we lower these fasteners and by moving this nut, turning it, we will move the roller block up or down. After installation, we fix it back, clamp our stops. After installing the rotor, it is necessary to clamp the supports. Two screws are used to fix the support, hexagons are used to move the support. We fix two screws in front and two screws in the back. The next step is to put on the belt and stretch it with the help of the steering wheel. When stretched, this roller moves. There is a fairly large range here in order to roll the rotor from a small diameter to a large one. Also, these two rollers move along the grooves, again for a larger girth of the rotor diameters. The minimum sufficient girth angle of the rotor belt is at least 120 degrees, the optimal angle is 180, respectively. Before starting balancing, after installing the rotor, it is necessary to drip oil on the rotor neck and make several turns with your hands. We repeat this with the first and with the second neck. After installing the rotor and installing the belt on the belt drive, it is necessary to close the protective brackets. These protective brackets can also be used when the rotors are of the cantilever type, that is, the center of mass of the rotor will be outside one of the supports. And the next stage, we will move on to the grandmother. 
pinoli and pinoli fixation are installed on the headstock. In order to move the pinoli, first loosen the pinoli fixation, then move the pinot. We connect the gimbal shank with the part and after fixing we fix the pinoli. We fix it with bolts and clamp the pinoli. Regarding the installation of the laser sensor, we install it at a distance of at least 10 cm from the rotor, preferably so that the line shines vertically from above our point. And when passing the label on the laser sensor, the LED should light up. After starting the computer, the balancing program will load automatically. So, in this program we have functions, calculation. We can do the calculation according to three different types, or according to the accuracy class of the rotor, according to the minimum achievable residual specific imbalance and according to the residual permissible imbalance. Next, in order to select the accuracy class of the rotor, click on the arrow, select the necessary one. If we don't know which one to choose, we click help and here are the T speakers that can be selected for the appropriate class. We move between classes and look at which class our type of rotor falls under. Usually this is the third, fourth, fifth grade. Next, the maximum rotation speed of the rotor in the mechanism is set, the application radii, that is, the radii of the control load installation and the radii of the imbalance elimination. Distance to the center of mass. If the rotor is symmetrical, then two identical numbers. If the rotor is not symmetrical, this distance can be recorded in millimeters, percentages, parrots, whatever. The next step is to introduce the mass of the rotor. After installing all the data, the calculation is pressed, and we get a balancing tolerance already in grams. Click Accept. Here our balancing tolerance is displayed in grams. Here the control load for the default setting is tenfold and it is also duplicated, but here we can enter this control load, which we will adjust. In this case, we will install 10 grams here for customization. Click accept and go to the three start menu. The first launch of uncontrolled cargo. We selected it, set the rotation speed to a minimum, press the start of rotation. We press the start of the measurement and smoothly increase the speed until we do not observe it on the screen, while keeping an eye on the rotor so that it does not escape from us. We set the speed for this rotor to 500 revolutions. This will be more than enough for balancing. After the measurement stop lights up, we look at the stability of the display of angles and magnitudes for each of the planes. When the values are stable, we press the measurement stop and the rotation stop. The next step is to choose a start with a control load on the first plane. We take our control weight, we approach the rotor. A white mark is installed on the rotor, we combine it with a red dot and after that we will install the weight on the first plane. We installed it and go to the monitor. We press the start rotation button. Wait for the indication to light up that the speed has been reached and press the start measurement on the computer. We are waiting until the stop measurement button becomes active.
After it has become active, we look at the stability of the display of angles and magnitudes. Everything is stable. Press stop measurement and stop rotation. The next step is to select the start on the second plane with the weight installed on the second plane. After starting with the load on the first plane, we return the same position. Unscrew our control load and transfer it to the second plane. Again, opposite the label and we make a start on the second plane. We twisted the weight, press the start of rotation again, wait for the light bulb to light up that the rotor has reached the set speed and press the start measurement button. Again, we are waiting for the alarm that the device has been measured. After the stop has become active, again, we look for the stability of the display of angles and magnitudes. After stabilization, press stop measurement and stop rotation. Next, click the result and save the rotor under any name that will be displayed in the report in the future. If it is necessary to change this name, click on the name of the rotor, enter the name we want, click enter and click save. Next, we switch to balancing mode, where the name of the rotor is displayed on top. In this case, we have an imbalance of 9 grams on the left side and 11.5 grams on the right side. Let's move on to correcting this imbalance. We weigh our control cargo, 8 and 7 grams. Next, we combine the orange sticker with the imbalance vector. After combining, we install our weight vertically from above in the same plane in which the laser shines. And we do the same on the second plane. We weigh our weight. There are 11 and 6 grams, and again we combine our slider with the imbalance vector. We install the weight on the second plane vertically from above, in the plane in which the varnish shines. Before installing weights, it is necessary to check which method of elimination we have. In this case, we put an addition. After starting on the second plane, we remove the weight from the second plane and proceed to the installation of balancing weights. A weight of 9 grams is installed on the first plane and a weight of 11 grams is installed on the second plane. Everything opposite the label is done. After the sheaf of the weight, we press the start of rotation. there is. After stabilizing the angles of the values, we press the rotation stop and make another correction. Again, we combine the corners and install weights. Next, we make a second compensation. A weight of 2 grams is installed on the first plane and a weight of 2 grams is again installed on the second plane, combining the label. After installation, press the start of rotation. The stop has become active. We look at the stability of angles and magnitudes. When everything is stable, click stop measurement. 
In this case, we are in the tolerance. The tolerance is 0.6 grams for each of the planes. After the balancing is over, click Report, Create, enter the operator's surname or operator's name. Select the first descent from the boss, the last start as the final one. Click Create, go to the report, which displays the speed at which the balancing took place, the correction radius, our initial imbalance, the final imbalance. Last name of the performer, date. Then we can either print it or save it. 